Chris Heimlich, DC, and welcome to our website on the thyroid. Today we're going to be talking about hypothyroid symptoms. And in our clinic, what we do is instead of treating the symptoms, we're going to treat the patient. And in medicine, a lot of times what they do is they take the patient, give them a diagnosis, and treat the diagnosis. In our clinic, what we're going to do is we're going to have you do a full bed of off workup and a neurological evaluation if need be. Um, and then we're not going to treat the diagnosis, we treat the patient. Now, the way you become a patient in our office is call our office at and uh, our clinic, and you fill out a request box below if you're on our website. You're going to get a 35-minute DVD on the thyroid. It goes into a little bit more extensively than we have time to do today. And it goes through the pathways on how metabolically we can possibly help out those who are suffering with the thyroid problems. And you have to sign out the day to fill out the paperwork and get back to us. At that point, we're going to decide whether we can accept you as a patient in our clinic. And now there are two ways to contact us, 480-991-9355. The others go to our website. AskDrHeinrich.com. Hit the contact button at the top, and there we go. Now, here's the thyroid right over through here. Here's the metabolic pathway for it. Now, this is well documented in the literature, and basically it starts up in the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is up here in the brain. It sends down a hormone to the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland then sends down something called thyroid stimulating hormone. It goes down into the thyroid. Uh, now, on your thyroid panel, you're going to see something called TSH. And this number should be, now this is important, extremely important, this number for optional functioning thyroid gland should be between 1.8 and 3.0. Now, the normal medical range is probably on your lab uh, sheet, we'll say anywhere from 0.5 to 5.0. But for optimal function, it should be between 1.8 and 3.0. Now, the pituitary gland is going to send down that hormone down to the thyroid gland. Now, most people don't know this, but the thyroid produces what's called T3 and T4. T3 and T4 get the names from the amount of iodine attached to them. T3 is the only active part in the thyroid hormone. It's the only part that gets into the cells and drives the metabolism. Now, 93% of it gets converted to T4. 7% gets converted to the active form. You have to, have to get this rest of this T4 converted down in the liver. 60% of it gets converted over in the gut. 20% of that gets converted. Uh, um, converted, and 20% goes into reverse T3, which is inactive and never gets used. So the point I want to make here is we're going to go through six major pathways that's going to um, cause hypothyroidism. And the only way that medicine usually treats this is the one that uses the thyroid stimulating hormone that helps out with the thyroid. We're going to look at that too, but the point is I want you to know that out of the six pathways, only one that you can take synthroid benefits. So we want to talk about this. Now I'm going to use this diagram here to show what the different breakdown is of the pathways of the hypothyroid symptoms. Remember, our clinic, we treat the person, not the diagnosis. So the reason you're on the website today searching for these symptoms is because you or your loved one currently is suffering from hypothyroid system symptoms, and you're not getting results. Fact is, 27 million Americans suffer from hypothyroidism. And of the six major pathways, only one really gets helped by taking the synthroid. The others can't be helped. You break that down. That's 83% of people with hypothyroid systems aren't going to be getting help uh, and alleviate their symptoms just by taking that. That's so why I have to keep up in the dosage. Uh, let's go through this pathway number one. Number one is called primary hypothyroidism. And this pathway, that's when if you take your synthroid, that's what it helps it out. It helps you feel better. It improves your quality of your life. The reason being is the thyroid isn't producing enough, so you take the thyroid stimulating hormone, and it helps the thyroid out. That's not the ones watching this video right now. The ones watching the video the ones been suffering 10, 20, 30 years, and they're told their lab results are normal, but they keep having these symptoms of hypothyroidism. The doctor doesn't really know what to do, doesn't want to hear it, just increases the dosage. and hopes that's going to help out with the symptoms. Um, if it is truly a thyroid problem, you can take that, and you're going to get some good results. And like I said, good results are improving the quality of your life. Um, and that's as long as it's not an autoimmune system. don't have time to get into that today, but if it is, that's something called Hashimoto's. And what you need to do is get your immune system treated, not your thyroid, because the thyroid is not the problem. Now, the second type of hypothyroid symptom we have is hypothyroidism secondary to the hypopituitary gland. Now, that means that the thyroid is fine, but the pituitary gland up here isn't functioning the way it should. If you take out your thyroid uh, blood work, you're going to see your, your TSH is going to be around 8, 1.8 or lower. Now, the problem with this is that when you have lower thyroid stimulant hormone, you should have hyperthyroid symptoms. Now, what causes our pituitary gland malfunction? The problem is 
The state can say, well, it's not going to help this. If this is a problem, that's not going to fix that. But think of it this way. If you go out and you crank the car, you turn it over, and it doesn't, it doesn't turn over, it doesn't start up, and you replace the alternator, and so start as a problem, you're not going to get anywhere. See, this is a problem. We keep stimulating that thyroid when this is a problem up in through here. Um, and why is it malfunction? Well, can pituitary can malfunction, uh, chronic stress, busy lifestyle, hormone pills, hormone creams. Uh, next one would be caffeine intake, high carb diet, not getting enough sleep, infections, uh, inflammation can all wreak havoc on the adrenal glands, which has input into the pituitary gland. Now, the second part called pituitary gland malfunction is postpartum depression. Because when a lady's pregnant, that just wreaks havoc on the pituitary gland 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, the amazing part is, is the third reason we can have pituitary is actually from taking things like Synthroid, keep stimulating the thyroid over and over and over. It's a too much stimulation, actually starts to shut down even more. That's the second cause. Now, the third is what we call underconversion. That means that hypothalamus is okay, pituitary is okay, the thyroid's okay, all functioning properly. Uh, but when you get down to the liver and the gut, it's not able to convert the T4 to the active T3 form. How do we know? Well, we've got to run the blood test. We have to run the T4 and T3 also to find out where the problem is. Are we producing enough T4? Is the T4 being converted into T3? Here's what will happen if you're not converting T4 into T3. Number one is because of high cortisol levels. How's that happen again? Normal stress, increased stress, which uh, on our adrenal glands produces cortisol. Uh, infections, inflammations. Uh, infections can um, come from uh, bacterial viruses, inflammations. Also, there's a problem with what's called lipid peroxidase. That's free radical in which T4 actually can't get into the cells to be converted to T3. So the amazing part about this is we have a problem way down here, but what we're doing is we're treating this one right here. Keep trying to stimulate that thyroid doesn't really work. So if there's nothing wrong with the thyroid, how can you stimulate it even more to make it work better? Okay, now the next part is due to overconversion. So you'll have the thyroid symptoms because of overconversion. So the hypothalamus is good, pituitary is good, thyroid's good, all function properly. How do we know? Got to run the test. See if they're in the optimal range. If you have a situation when we convert too much T3 into T4, how does that happen? Well, first of all, it's going to happen because you have too much testosterone in our body. How do we know? We have to run the test. You usually do this with a uh, salivary test as opposed to blood. gives a better indication. Second, you can be insulin resistant. You have to run the test. It ranges for blood sugar levels. It should be 85 to 99. And uh, if it's from 100 to 126, that's insulin resistant. And if it's 127 or higher on two different blood tests, that's going to be diabetic. But insulin resistance is a driving force in overconversion. So testosterone, insulin resistance, and then something called polycystic ovary syndrome can cause that. You can get a sonogram and uh, they'll be able to tell whether you have that or not. The reason you get that is because you have too much testosterone or insulin resistance. So you have to test, uh, correct those testosterone levels and have to correct insulin resistance. How do you know? You have too much testosterone. Well, ladies, maybe getting some hair on the chin and the chest. Um, now, the next part we're going to go over is talking about hypothyroidism due to elevated thyroid binding globulin. Big fancy word, and it means that your thyroid hormones have to get into this taxi cab, which is called thyroid binding globulin. And then they go to the liver and stomach to be transported and transferred into T3 to T4. Excuse me, from T4 to T3. Now, the way we get the elevation in these taxi cabs is through estrogen hormone replacement therapy. What can happen is estrogen will actually jump into the taxi cab instead of the hormone and block the thyroid hormone from getting in the taxi cab. So it can't get to the liver and intestines to be converted to T3, the form that's active. Lastly, we have hypothyroidism because of insulin resistance. Now, how does this happen? This is going to happen because of increased cortisol due to stress in the adrenal gland and secondary due to homocysteine. I know I've gone over a lot of information quickly. Um, that's why if you need more information, give us our link like a call at 480-991-9355. to get you out a DVD, 35 minutes, 35 minutes is going to give you more information on this. I hope you learned something today. I went through it fairly quickly. I had six steps to go through in 10 minutes. Remember, only one of these steps is a problem truly with the thyroid. Any questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Again, my name is Dr. Chris Heimlich. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.